Hi, I'm Amy Kirsch, and I am in Cushing Square. I am standing here in front of one of Belmont's newest businesses. This is the House of Lavash at 7 Cushing Avenue, Belmont. Come with me to take a tour of this great business on today's Belmont Business Spotlight. What a beautiful storefront. Please start out, tell us your names. I'm Armin Manukian. Armin Manukian. And we're so happy to have you here in Cushing Square. Tell us a little bit about House of Lavash. How did you decide on your name? The name, uh, we came up with a few options and it was her idea to do House of Lavash. And um, that's how we eliminated other options and that's the one we chose. Should I say about the house of Gucci? So my husband and I, the mom, our kids are at uh, school. So sometimes back then before the store was opened, uh, we had time to watch movies together. So we watched House of Gucci and it stuck in my head. And then when we were deciding the name, multiple options came up and we wanted to use Lavash in the name because that's about it. It's about the store. It, it, the store is about the bread. The bread is called lavash, and that's what we wanted to deliver. And then I said, how about House of Lavash? No one liked it. So we wrote down, we waited, we stayed on it for a couple of days, and then we read it again, and that stuck out, the House of Lavash. So you can um, sing House of Gucci movie <laughs> for the name. Love it. Tell me about your history of making bread. Have you I done it before? No. So basically the story is during COVID, I started baking bread because that was one thing that I could do after work. Uh, I worked throughout the COVID because I worked for a bank and we were open every day. But my joy during those days were, was um, actually making bread, sourdough bread. Um, so I grew my own uh, sourdough and we were watching it as if it's our baby being born. Um, that's how we were um, every day looking at the uh, sourdough making sure that it grows. And that's how I started making the bread. And um, that was the first time that I actually baked bread. So we have no history of baking bread. But one of the fondest memories of me growing up in Armenia uh, was every summer um, we would go to the village, to our grandparents, um, to the village of Shahumyan in Artsakh. And um, I would spend my summer there with my cousins and my siblings. And one of the best memories that I remember is when there was a bread making. Bread making is very um, traditional in Armenia. Uh, I'm sure it's traditional everywhere else, but lavash is very traditional for Armenia. It's one go-to bread. There is no gathering at an Armenian uh, traditional table without lavash. And it's very healthy. That's the whole thing, that you can eat bread with no yeast, no sugar, no preservatives. Um, very thin and very low calories, and that's how we made it. So did you travel to learn it again, or did you, like, how did you decide on your current recipe, and how did you start the process? Well, yes, uh, yeah. I uh, spent a few days with where I got the equipment from, Yeah. learning, and uh, although I have the best uh, <laughs> dough making, <laughs> Uh, companion and yeah. bread making companion that Armin is and we basically together figured it out and everyone likes it. <laughs> and so, uh, I'll, I'll just add to it, um, it's one thing to have a recipe from Armenia or from out of state right. or from wherever but local um, flour, local salt, local water makes the difference so we had to actually try multiple flowers um, before we decided on the, we like the te texture and the taste. Yeah. Um, because just, you know, you cannot use a recipe from back home and then use it here and it comes out perfect. No, you need to try and you need to um, 
um, experiment. experiment, make some mistakes, do some adjustments. You know, uh, I had some secrets from the bread making that I'm like, okay, you need this type of flour and this type of flour because I knew from vi the videos that I watched and from my practices. Uh, and that's how we came up and we asked the community. We just, in the beginning, we started giving, uh, giving away the bread uh, to see if the community likes it. Mm. And then eventually it happened. From the first batch, it was a go. <laughs> it's a gift that you are giving to our community to be able to go and get fresh bread. Lavash bread is a joy. And I was looking at your website. There's so many different recipes you can do with it. Um, I liked the boil egg recipe you had. Oh, what is your favorite way to have lavash bread? So um, let me actually talk about lavash a little bit mm -hmm. um, so that the viewers can um, understand what it is. Um, there are three ingredients in it. It's water, salt, and flour. And since flour is the main ingredient, you need to have a very good flour. Otherwise, you're not going to have good, uh, good bread. And a typical lavash looks just like this. See? It's beautiful. It's very it smells thin. good. It smells For those perfect. viewers at home. Here. So, uh. that's the lavash. Super thin. And uh, traditionally, it's, it's baked on the on the sides of the clay oven. Uh, there is a hole in the middle of the uh, surface, and then you just uh, tap it on the walls. Within 30 seconds, you take it out. It comes out very dry. You have to, you can put it just like that, dry, and keep it indefinitely. They say for a year, but it will dry. Like if it's dry, really, it, it yeah. doesn't go bad. That's the beauty of it. So back in the day, uh, traditionally, this would, you know, in the villages, they would bake it, I don't know, once in six months. It's a very um, labor intensive labor intensive process. Yeah. Because, it's space in intensive too. It takes because a Because you take, it's a small dough, you roll it out really thin for it to become like this. And yeah. then you need to tap it on the uh, clay oven uh, wall and then you take it out. And if you don't water it uh, to become like this moisture um, and soft, um, it can stay, they stack it just like that picture that you see. They stack it and keep it there um, for months. And then they, every day, whenever they need it, you just water it, it absorbs the moisture and it becomes soft like this and you use it in the recipes. Actually, um, lavash has been accepted as, um, um, you want to say about it? The Armen As, uh, uh, item of Armenian heritage into UNESCO's heritage list. Intangible um, heritage list in 2014 is the traditional Armenian bread. You can make a great sandwich. Um, hummus, you know, you put hummus, you put chicken, you wrap it, it becomes a chicken sandwich. The way we do it in Armenia, um, and that's how we grew up, um, you take the lavash, a thin, you know, um, the part, cheese, um, herbs, um, parsley, cilantro, tarragon, any of the herbs that we actually have right here uh, and right, mint, you just put basils. all of it together and wrap it, it becomes the best uh, breakfast uh, one can have. So yeah. Belmont lunches are now transformed, we all need the lavash bread. And it sounds delicious. It sounds And like because there's no anything. yeast in it, it's very healthy and mm -hmm. very, very low calorie. So you can have the taste of bread right. without really uh, the, heaviness. the heaviness of the bread or the calories that it may and the carbs. Of course. Wonderful. Yeah. So tell me how you chose Cushing Square and Belmont for your location for House of Lavash. Yes, we are from Watertown, but just across from Belmont Street. We're almost in Belmont. And obviously the second thing to do was to find a good location that we could bring our um, idea into life. And uh, we started looking everywhere in Watertown and we were walking this way once and we saw this space available and we fell in love with it. It was old, it was a little bit um, neglected. I think it wasn't operational for years. And the minute we saw it, we said, this is it. And there was a contact information and the next day, we didn't even talk too much. We said, we're taking it. Awesome. And we just went through. And I tell you, um, 
Belmont community was great and the location is wonderful. There's so much happening around in this area. Cushing Square is wonderful. We like the, uh, the traffic, the looks, the scenery, the new buildings. And uh, you have a good view is, from here. We have a great view from here and a lot uh, is happening in the, around the square that we didn't even know about, but it's, it's, it's really great. It's coming along very well. Are you going to be doing any shipping of your bread or is it all local business? Right now we're focused on the local production and local uh, demand um, in the retail part of it. Mm -hmm. And as I said, we're just trying to meet the demand. Yeah. Um, there has been inquiries from outside of the state. Um, Amazing. Yeah. yeah, but right now we're focusing on this. So yeah. one thing I want to add to the finding location, it was summer and we had this idea. Arman actually had this idea years ago eight, ten years ago he wanted to do this and then it didn't work out. It's, you know, we know that it's a lot of work. And we've had a different restaurant who was baking bread, lavash. Um, they stopped after COVID. She shared with me that it's a lot of work. Yeah, It's time consuming, labor uh, intense um, process. Um, and we kind of stopped for a few years. And then when the opportunity came up, First thing we needed before we bring the production, we needed to find place, space. And we didn't want to go anywhere far from Watertown, Belmont, because, you know, my kids went to school here. We know the community. We live down the street. So it's convenient. My brother, who is the other owner, he has little kids, you know, um, and we wanted to be local so that we can uh, target the community and deliver for the community. One night, walking, just as evening walk, and as Arman said, we saw the location and we fell in love. Nice. So tell me a little bit more about what you plan to sell. We have lavash bread, which is obviously your main feature. Is there other things that you plan to incorporate? Sure. The idea is really um, healthy food. Mm -hmm. And lavash is the healthiest bread you can have. And um, the other thing that I love a lot is sweets and desserts and I don't want all the calories and the heaviness of desserts. So one other way of doing that part is through dried fruits from Armenia. Mm -hmm. Technology hasn't penetrated that part of the world and most of the things besides that the fruits are delicious there. Um, there is no technology being invested in the fruits to make it dry and it's very natural there is no sugar no artificial flavors it's fruits and sun sun dried that's what we call and we have this product so this way i can have the bread healthy bread and i can have the desserts healthy desserts One without the sugars shopping for health food which is fabulous <laughs> correct so that's, that's the problem. idea anything else we introduce later on mm -hmm. will be focused on that that's great that we can do all natural ingredients, no sugars, no artificial flavors, no heavy stuff, no yeast, no GMOs, no preservatives. This way uh, you can have the tastiest, uh, lowest calorie possible food that tastes great. That's the idea, yes. So are you getting hungry yet? Because Armand and Armina are going to give us a tour of their bakery now. So here we are in the House of Lavash bakery room. I'm so excited to get a little tour and taste of what they start doing. So this is the prep area. This is where we do initial um, prep of the dough. We make it round balls this size. We flatten it. And we put it through the machine and we make him flat. This is the initial size of it. It has yet to go through two more flattening processes before it becomes what we do. And I'll show it to you in the uh, actual baking area, awesome. the rest of it. Can you show us one time going through the machine? Yes. Here we are. They're about to make lavash in this amazing. What do you call this? 
This is the equipment, the, the, the oven. This is the oven. So he stretches the lavash and then it goes to the oven? Yes, so it's all um, stone oven inside. And How this long is does it take from start to the end? Less than a minute okay. to come out. So what we do is we flatten it here further two more times. We lay through, it goes in, comes out from the other end, goes through splink, uh, sprinkler system, okay. and then it rests a little bit before we package it. Fabulous. Well, I can't wait to see you get started. Sure. And there it comes. Here it comes. Goes through the sprinkler system. is very soft as you can see it's like a paper towel bread um, you can fold it roll it it's very elastic very thin and very tasty we have the sheet of lavash it's not a loaf it's a sheet and at home for example if we're getting ready to uh, for dinner the way we cut it we basically make squares like this I'm going to cut it for you so that you can try. And you can use perfectly fine scissors if you want to. Um, you can do that too. So that's how basically it comes up. You want to try? I would love to try. It's delicious and thin. So you and can... it doesn't taste healthy. Oh, okay. <laughs> Thank you for tuning in with today's Belmont Business Spotlight. I so enjoyed learning about House of Lavash, and I hope everyone here comes and tastes this amazing bread in town. See you next time.